What's up, everybody? My name is Matt. And over the last several weeks, we've been talking about what it means to be a party starter. Now, when we say party, we mean any effort to celebrate, serve, or enjoy spending time with others in a way that adds value to life. And so being a party starter means being someone who creates space for that to happen wherever they go. It's the kind of person who points others to the promise that Jesus made about getting the most out of life. But isn't it true that when it comes to a party, who you're with really matters? I mean, think about it. Would you rather be surrounded by the people who bring the party or the people who bring the party down? Yeah, I'd pick the party starters. For example, have you ever been around someone who is so absolutely, positively certain, without a doubt, no questions, convinced that they are right about something? And I'm not just talking about someone you can argue with for their case as to why Drake is the best rapper out there. We all know that's true. No, I'm talking about the person who can't be wrong about anything. That person isn't who comes to mind when I say party starter. Like there's a guy that I worked with who's a huge Michigan football fan. But anytime you talk to him about it, his opinion on how good they were going to be, he would always end those statements with 100% no questions. I'm pretty sure there's some questions there, but you can't ask him anything. See, when we're really passionate about something or want someone to see things our way, we feel like we can't ask questions or change our mind or say, I'm not sure because that uncertainty or that doubt, it makes us look weak or dumb or unaware. And that's not how any of us wanna be seen. So instead we answer or we argue or we come off like we know it all, even though we know we don't. And eventually we become the exact opposite of a party starter. We become somebody who knows, assumes, defends more than anything else. We think we know and we assume we're right and we defend that position at all costs. And while we do, we tune out any voices that tell us anything other than what we think. We stop being curious, we stop wondering, we don't ask questions and we close our ears to wisdom or advice or opinions from anyone who thinks anything else than what we think. And then we even bring this into our faith. We assume that being a Christian means being people who know, assume, and defend what we believe. We can't be wrong. We can't have any doubts or any questions. And we certainly can't say, I don't know. But here's the good news. That's not what faith is all about. And that's not even what Jesus encouraged. What we talk about today might be a huge relief for some of you who felt like you have to have all the answers all the time. And to help us get there, we're gonna look back at something written down by a guy named Luke. See, Luke took time to investigate the details of the life that Jesus lived, and then he wrote them down. And his writing is one of the four books of the Bible that tells us what Jesus' life on earth was like. And of those four books, Luke spends the most time talking about Jesus' birth, his childhood, and his teenage years. Yes, Jesus was once a teenager. It's kind of wild to think about that, isn't it? In this passage we're gonna look at today, Jesus is with his parents and they were traveling to Jerusalem for the Passover holiday. Now, this is something that every Jewish person did back then. No matter where they lived, it was part of the custom to return to Jerusalem for this remembrance of the way that God spared the Jewish people's lives hundreds of years before. The city would be crowded with people and there was very little room for any of them to be there. And as it turned out, this trip became kind of a disaster <laughs> because on the way home, Mary and Joseph, Jesus' parents, they looked around and they realized that Jesus wasn't anywhere to be found. <laughs> oh, even worse, they didn't even discover he was missing until a day after traveling. It's like that old Christmas classic movie, Home Alone. You ever see that movie? Now, if you're like me, you probably watch it and then you think, how could Kevin's parents actually do that? Like, this is a super ridiculous storyline. Well, but a couple thousand years ago, Mary and Joseph literally did this with the Son of God. <laughs> What a story. Now, as you can imagine, they were totally panicked and stressed out. They started looking everywhere and eventually they headed back to the temple. And after a couple of days, they finally found him. And when they got there, who did they see? They saw Jesus. He was just there hanging out with the religious teachers, asking them questions and listening to their answers like nothing was wrong at all. Luke tells us that their conversation went this way. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, 
searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search? He asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. And so they left Jerusalem from there and headed back to Nazareth, but this time with Jesus by their side. And then Luke writes this, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Now what we see Jesus up to in this passage as a preteen, the only passage we have of him as a preteen is fascinating. Jesus was spending his time trying to learn. He was asking questions. He was curious. He was listening to the wisdom from others in his life. This is so amazing because honestly, Jesus didn't have to listen to these guys to learn. He's God in human form. If anyone gets a pass for being a bit of a know-it-all, it's Jesus. If anyone has a right to know, assume, and defend their position as the correct one, it's Jesus. But that's not what he did. His mom and dad found him in the temple, learning from the religious teachers, asking them questions, seeking out knowledge and wisdom. And that's something that you can only do when you choose to live like you don't already know all there is to know. We can follow Jesus' example. A party starter knows that there is always something to learn from others. Jesus set the example for us. And like Jesus, we also have the permission to be curious. And we're invited to have humility about what we know and what we don't know. We can look for answers and we can listen to the wisdom of those around us as we learn and we grow and maybe we even change our minds. What's cool is that Jesus continued to set this example for us throughout his whole life and ministry. Years later in Jesus's most famous sermon he ever gave, he was teaching his disciples and the gathered crowds about what it means to live the full life that God promises. In it, he said this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. It's important to note that just before this, Jesus was talking about humility. He was encouraging his followers to stop judging and to take on more humility than arrogance. And then Jesus tells them to do this, ask, seek, and knock. So it could be that Jesus is telling us exactly what to ask and seek and knock for in these verses. We ask for humility. We seek answers through curiosity and questions. We knock, looking for wisdom. And when we find it, we receive it. So that's what I wanna challenge you to do this week. Instead of know, assume, and defend, try, ask, and seek, and knock. So what if we stopped living and behaving like we have it all figured out? What if instead we got comfortable asking questions like, what can I learn from you about this? What can I do differently? Because I don't know everything. What might I be getting wrong? What am I curious to know more about? Where do I need to ask, seek, and knock to find wisdom? Because here's the thing, admitting that we don't know everything, it isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign that we are in touch with reality. Because if Jesus spent time learning, growing, and asking questions, then we should too. We should find the wise people in our lives to learn from and listen to as we grow in faith. And here's a hint, your small group leader is definitely one of those people. That's what a party starter knows that there is more to know and more people to learn from, that the more curious we are, the more an adventure meeting new people is, that it's never a party with people who think they know it all, understand it all, and have it all figured out. The party is with the people who know there's always more to learn and there's always more people to learn from. See, this party could use less know-it-alls and more question askers. In other words, the party could use more people like Jesus because a party starter knows that there is always something to learn from others. And the sooner we begin living like we have something to learn, the sooner the world begins to look more like the party that Jesus imagined. So when you go to small groups and start learning alongside those party starters in your circle, I want you to think about this question. Who is one wise person in my life that I can learn from? 